Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to go over a remote desktop client. Um, there are many remote desktop clients on the Zoom, but um, I wanted to go over this one in particular just because it was free. Many of them range between $15 and $30, and I, I, I see a lot of good reviews on those ones. But um, I thought I'd just first off check and see how the experience is on the Zoom. And um, so let's let's go forth and do that. So one thing you can see my fingers actually covering up um, the server, just protecting the the IP and the and the login of uh, my device. But you can see I've successfully connected um, the the operating system's Windows Server 2008 R2, but um, it, it, it will connect to any uh, Windows uh, client, and uh, it works fairly well. You know, you're pressing the start. All programs. Sometimes this keyboard comes up. Um, so this is one of the little my little corps. So which, when you're not even selecting something worthy of a, of a keyboard input, this is when it comes up. So I, I normally go to the options and then hit the keyboard and then go back down. And usually that the keyboard doesn't pop up again. So it's a little little annoying, but easily fixed, and it usually doesn't bug you again. And then you know you can go through and the menu relatively well. Um, you know, let's uh, you know you can zoom up on the arrow, go down on the arrow, clicking it's it's fair, you know pretty accurate for a touch screen. Um, clicking on Microsoft Office, open opening up Word. And then, you know, Word 2010 um, opens up. You can see that the uh, the resolution and the color and everything looks pretty solid on this uh, app. And here we are in Word. So I'm just going to click and uh, bring up the keyboard and well, the copy of Word is not activated. Let's just close that. Bring up the keyboard. Oh, we're still getting updates. You can see though the the touch is uh, pretty well done. I'm able to navigate pretty well on the screen. So it adds a unique a unique flavor to the desktop and you can see the typing and word processing. If I wanted to uh, highlight I can go in the options and do this mouse thing, and then I'll be able to highlight it, and then I can also hold down to bring up the right click and copy. Excuse me. You don't need that mouse thing to actually highlight and everything, so highlight hold down copy let's make a space enter hold down paste text there you go so it 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 works fairly well i know i, I think this would be amazing um, with the Bluetooth keyboard being able to type out in Word rel relatively well. Let's exit out of here. Let's not save the changes. Boom, boom. All right, Paint, another great application that works in the remote desktop. Oh, it's on white, so of course it's not going to draw. So you can see. Working pretty well. You can do shapes. You can also do shapes in the right color. Fill in. There we got a little ninja. Got to add that in, right? And then 
we can type and add text, bring up the keyboard. And it, 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 it almost actually is very similar to uh, to a, a Windows Tablet OS, except you're just using it on your, your Zoom. So it, it works fairly well. I mean, I even opened up uh, Photoshop. Um, you got this nice circle. Oh, I wanted to do those effects. But let's right click on here. Blending options. Let's do a bevel and emboss. Go to the bevel and emboss. Move this menu over so you can see what I'm doing. Um, you can see I can actually for the most part easily move the little bevels. Let's do an emboss. And um, I think it's on invisible mode and that's why it's not showing. Okay, there we go. You can see I can pretty much back to bevel and boss, disable texture, disable contour. You can see you can move and play with the size. I mean it's not the most precise thing, but the fact that you're able to come on here and um, actually interact and have a somewhat decent experience for free. What what more can you ask for? Um, and and you know I, I pull up Visual Studios. Imagine you know the drag and drop Visual Studios experience. It's all there, and um, it, it takes advantage of everything really well. So to be able to have a Bluetooth keyboard, no, I'm I'm getting one, so I'll be able to do an update with that, and um, even a mouse. That that would be huge if we could get a mouse going. This would be just an exceptional um, way to take your Zoom anywhere, and um, you know use the Windows desktop to uh, you know enhance any of your activities that you don't readily have available on the Zoom yet. So I, I hope this was an eye opener for s some people. Um, it, it certainly was for me. Um, again, this, this app is free. Um, and it's called uh, Remote RDP Lite. So um, definitely check that app out, um, get it, and uh, have fun with it. Um, as, as far as connecting to a desktop, this is another thing. I, this, this computer has a public IP. And if you don't know what that means, that that's okay. It just it's sort of like a website, like um, CNN or um, Google. All of these have this IP address where it's publicly known, and you can just go to it. All most computers have, and personal computers don't have this ability. So you need to get one, and it could be relatively costly to do so. There are remote desktop clients like LogMeIn that are available for the Zoom that have the capability of installing this server app on your computer and then you can connect to it from the Zoom. So if you're looking for an experience on your personal computer and you don't have a public IP, that's definitely the route you want to go. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. If you have uh, fut future apps that you want me to overview, please uh, let me know. Um, if this video was useful, please like it and uh, I will, I'm always updating daily for videos that regarding the Zoom. So please subscribe if you uh, are interested in uh, any other uh, future videos or to check out my past ones. Have a great day. Oh, actually, one little thing, P.S. So the bug that I was coming across, I didn't show here, but there are times when I am um, using the application and the screen goes black or parts of the screen go black. There's no way to recover from it. What I do um, and I'll show you just quickly. Oh, this is actually one of the one of the one of the occasions. The screen's black. You're logged in. There's nothing you can do. What I do is I go in and hit disconnect, 
and then upon logging in again everything resumes to normal so if you even if you're in the user experience all of a sudden the screen goes black you don't know why I haven't found a way to recover from it besides disconnecting and reconnecting okay well I hope that was helfull thank you everybody very much for watching and I'll catch you later